services that can be used to consume music, um, from iTunes to Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, RDO, Deezer, and many more. Uh, and with all the data that these produce, uh, it's really a different world, especially in a world where Facebook has over a billion users. So this is a world where there's a lot of data being thrown off and a lot of consumption online. And if we look at uh, the activity that Next Big Sound tracked in 2012, we see almost 94 billion new plays, 5.7 billion new artist fan relationships online, and 17.1 billion new profile views. So this is a huge scale, right? There's a, a lot of data being thrown off into the world. Um, and it's also a different world in terms of uh, sales, digital sales and its role in the industry. So if you look back to 2004, you see that digital sales were only very uh, slightly be starting to be a part of the world, right? You have uh, less than 1% of total US music sales being digital. And now in 2012 in the US, uh, over 50% of the music industry, of the revenue from it, uh, is happening in the digital world. So it's very important to look at digital analytics, to look online. Everybody knows this by now. Um, and Next Big Sound was really built in that age. So Next Big Sound is an analytics and insights company. Um, our whole purpose is to take data online, to collect it, and to provide a platform for analysis. Um, so I'll give you a little bit more background about Next Big Sound and then dive into some analytics work. Great. So Next Big Sound collects data from almost every web platform uh, that's relevant to music. So we collect from Facebook, Last.fm, still MySpace, but lots of other uh, important media, SoundCloud. Uh, we merge that with data from engagement sites, so things like Wikipedia and Google Analytics. Um, and uh, the most important thing that we collect that we can merge with all this is the sales data. Uh, so we have relationships with uh, three of three major labels. So um, all of the major players, we collect iTunes and Spotify data, uh, time-stamped and geocoded every day. Uh, and we have that for over 80% of the recorded music industry in the US uh, and growing internationally as well. Um, so that puts us in a place where we can really help our partners to understand digital media better. Um, and so why do they use Next Big Sound? They want to consolidate data and save time. So we bring all this data together into one place. Um, it allows them to measure results, to simplify and enhance their reporting, uh, to find opportunities in the market. A lot of what the panel was talking about before was sort of finding opportunities for bands and also for festivals to find new opportunities. Uh, Next Big Sound is definitely focused on this. It's sort of the, the core of us is finding the Next Big Sound. Um, and finally, to make better decisions and improve uh, return on investment. Uh, a little bit more background about Next Big Sound. We've had two charts licensed to Billboard, the Social 50 and the NBS chart. And there's only been two data partners that Billboard has worked with in its history. And that was Nielsen in 1991 and Next Big Sound in 2010. So let's look a little bit about uh, what kind of platform we provide. So here's an example of an overview, a top level view of a range of artists. This is from the Social 50, which is the most important artists, uh, or most popular at least. Um, looking at various metrics. So here you can get an idea of what the current metrics are for this artist. Uh, you can see the trend, so whether it's up or down, and you can also see a little bit of the behavior uh, just at a glance. But if you really want to understand more about what's going on with an artist, you have to dive in deeper. Um, so for example, if we were to look at Enrique Iglesias, uh, you could look at his graphs. You could look at different metrics, and so here we're looking at uh, media-based radio feed spins, and that's uh, in blue here. We're looking at Facebook in red, and we're looking at the YouTube video views in green. So you can see that there's a new song release here trending up uh, in radio spins, and then we're seeing some commensurate uh, social media activity that's coming up along with that. Uh, so this is sort of a way to get a good overview of what's going on with an artist, to look at the different metrics, and to understand really what's going on. Uh, but really the core of taking this data is what I started to do here, which is data storytelling. And so with data storytelling, you want to take this data and you want to really give it a human element and you want to bring in the dynamics that as professionals in the music industry you actually know are happening behind the scenes. Because the data is really just reflecting uh, 
what's actually happening in the real world. Um, so we have an interesting example here, an unusual story where data can really be used to tell the story. Uh, so here we have an artist who has very high digital track sales. And so the artist's track sales are in blue here. And the other artists are in various different colors. These are comparison artists, right? Similar artists in the field. Um, you can see that this artist has very strong sales. But if you look down below, again, the same blue time series is much lower in terms of radio spins uh, than any of the other artists who are you know, breaking singles and, and having these nice, long, sweeping charts of the popularity of their songs. Um, so the question is, in this sort of new digital music industry, how do we find out what's going on with this artist? How do we understand uh, what's driving the popularity, what's driving the sales here? Um, so digging deeper, comparing again against various different artists, uh, and going through all the different metrics that we have for this artist, there's one that really jumps out. Uh, and the one there is YouTube views for this artist. So the YouTube views for this artist are in blue, absolutely eclipsing all of the other artists that are, he's comparable to. Um, and so this is really a growth story of digital uh, media, right? So social media, this artist is having huge success on YouTube, and that combined with the demographics of the fan base, which we see here below, a very highly female fan base. You can see it's 86% female and very young, concentrated between the ages of 13 to 17 and from 18 to 24. Um, so this is a great target market for, uh, for selling tracks. And so this is really explaining why this artist uh, is having such great success. And so this data alone wouldn't really be that valuable, but understanding what's going on behind it and understanding how you could use that to help further artists is really valuable. Uh, you can also take a look at different slices of the data. So here we're just looking at overall for an artist. But if we were to look at Super Lydio, who we'll hear later this week, uh, we can look at the track uh, plays on YouTube. So these are a bunch of different uh, videos that are being played on YouTube. And we can see that there is a concert that happened on Friday, August 23rd. And you can clearly see the impact on all these tracks. Um, so this allows the manager and the artist to understand what's having success, to understand what events are really becoming important in terms of driving new plays, driving engagement, gaining new fans. Um, and so being able to just dive into this view is very helpful. Uh, and I wanted to make a point about um, other analytics that are possible here. So here we're looking at just a track view, but you could also slice this data geographically. Um, so you could be looking at Twitter mentions in any region in any country. Uh, and if you were to do that, if you're asking the question, as an artist, where should I go to? Uh, what new countries should I try to address and when should I try to go to them? You can answer that by looking at the number of new fans and the new mentions that you're getting and using this in conjunction with your knowledge of what they mean. Um, you know, you're talking about people can always buy Facebook fans, etc. But if you know that it's real demand that's coming in and you know where it is and when it is, uh, it helps you to make decisions in the music industry. Um, so something that we're really concerned about, uh, really interested in, in uh, Next Big Sound is the intersection of social and sales. So we collect all the social media data on a daily basis, and we also have all the sales data that we're collecting from our customers. And so that allows us to do some really interesting analysis to understand what's driving those sales. Um, and we've done that in a few different ways. The best way, honestly, as we've just done in the past few slides, is to use visualization. You can understand in a single instance what's happening, what's driving sales, and you can really get a clear picture of what's going on with an artist. But if you want to take that and look at a broader view across hundreds or thousands of artists, you need to use some automated mathematical methods. Um, and that's where correlation, correlation analysis, and something called Granger causality come in. And I'll talk a little bit more about those later. So looking into visualization at first, here's a plot of the iTunes sales and the Spotify plays uh, for an artist. And you can clearly see there's an opposing pattern here, just looking at it you can see that the Spotify, which is in blue, uh, is very strong during the week, Monday through Friday. You see this five-day pattern uh, of strength, and then it drops off during the weekend. But you can also see that the iTunes has the exact opposite behavior, that customers are buying iTunes tracks on Saturday and Sunday primarily. And so if you're trying to optimize your marketing activity, you're trying to drive your customers to the best place to say, maybe during the week I want to promote, hey, I've got this new song and you should go listen to it on Spotify. But then as it's coming to the weekend, you know there's going to be a lot of demand for iTunes, and you should really push that because you know people are already looking to buy, and you might as well get them the tracks that you want them to have. 
Um, we can also do sort of a broader analysis looking at a handful of artists and looking at the dynamics of sales data. So here we're going to look at uh, iTunes and radio data. And this is a dynamic visualization uh, looking at iTunes on the left and radio spins on the bottom. And then each colored dot is an artist with a trail that follows it. So you can see these are artists who started out with strong track sales and then moved over into strong radio play, so moving over towards the right side of the graph with less track sales. And then gradually, as their track sales start to die out, they'll be moving back again towards the left. So you can see this typical pattern where the single spikes, it gets bought by the rabid fans, and then the radio picks it up and pushes it to a broader audience. And then finally, that single starts to die out. Um, so if we really want to expand this type of analysis to uh, a larger group of artists, to hundreds, thousands, uh, tens of thousands of artists, again, we need to use those mathematical methods. So that's where we start to use correlation analysis. So what we're trying to find out is what correlates to sales. Basically, what happens at the same time that sales do. Um, and if we dive into that, we find out that for albums and for tracks, the highest correlations uh, for albums are really sort of engagement metrics, Wikipedia views, um, and then RDO plays and radio spins and MySpace plays because we've been collecting data for over four years. Um, and if we look at tracks, we find that the highest correlations, uh, again, radio spins very high, but YouTube is very high there. So for track sales, YouTube is, is an important metric where uh, when people are buying tracks, they're also going and listening to YouTube on the same day, most likely. Um, and Facebook fans and Twitter fans are both really important there. So you can kind of look at that and, and look at that data and think, okay, what does that mean? They're moving together. Maybe this means that Facebook fans are being added at the same time as tracks are being purchased. Maybe people discover a band and become a fan on Facebook and buy the new track. Maybe it's vice versa. It's hard to know from correlation because you only know what's happening at the same time. Uh, and what we can use to really understand in a broader perspective with all of the metrics and also with some lag to understand what happens before uh, is something called Granger causality. And so at Next Big Sound, we have a, a small group of data scientists. Um, and one of the studies that we ran was this Granger causality study. And what we're looking at here is all the different social media metrics for an artist against their sales at once. And what we're trying to find out is which of these metrics is important and provides information that we don't already know from the sales. So what we saw before is that Facebook fans and Twitter fans were peaking at the same time as sales. Good to know, but it doesn't help us in terms of what's actually driving those sales. Um, so with Granger causality, we're going to find out what's happening before and what's happening at the same time and what's actually informing uh, your prediction of how many sales you're going to get for a track. Um, so what we did is we ran that across uh, I think at least 5,000 artists and tried to find out which of these metrics could we say is significantly causal of sales. So which one is actually um, really relevant towards predicting sales. So if we look at digital album sales, we see a different picture here. Uh, we see that what's most predictive, what adds the most information to understanding sales is the page views of the artist's website. So this makes sense. People go to the website before they buy the track. Uh, they go to find out, they go to find out maybe days before to see when the new release is. Um, probably the artist has been posting on Facebook saying, hey, my new release is out in two days, come check it out. Um, so this is happening before and at the same time as sales. Uh, but if we look a little bit below that, we see some of the same metrics here. We see Facebook page views, we see radio spins, and we see Wikipedia page views. And Going back to the data storytelling, we want to make a hypothesis about why this is happening. Uh, and the hypothesis here is that maybe people are going to Google and they're searching for an artist, and when that artist comes up, the first thing they see is probably the Facebook page or maybe the Wikipedia page. Um, so this is where the engagement is happening when people are looking for an artist uh, and when they're trying to find out what's this new album that dropped. And if we take a look at track sales, we see some of the same things. Radio spins, still very relevant. And these engagement metrics of Facebook Insights page views and Wikipedia page views are still also very relevant. So these are some examples of ways to tell stories with the data, uh, to use the data that we can collect on a daily basis, um, and to slice and dice it to really bring out uh, 
the dynamics of what's happening in the real world. Uh, but behind this, there's a lot of technology that's involved. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that, about the collection of data. So Next Big Sound started uh, primarily collecting data originally on MySpace and a couple other social networks, and we've gradually expanded our reach. Um, originally, our stack was pretty simple. We collected data from the sources, we put it in a database in storage, and then we finally moved that into our product where customers could see it. Uh, as time went on, we realized we needed to have some cleaning and we needed to provide some deeper analytics. Um, the cleaning is necessary because it turns out that as you collect data from uh, the various social media sources, they're big, they have huge scale and very smart people, but they always make mistakes. Uh, and so we have to find out all the little anomalies that are in there and try to clean them and at least identify them. Um, we also need to find out when something interesting is happening. So that's where this analytics piece comes into play. Uh, so we have something, we have an alert system, and this alert system is looking at the data every day and looking at the past history for a given artist. And so let's say that you usually get 30 Wikipedia views per day. And then all of a sudden you have 400 Wikipedia views someday. So that's way outside of the bounds of what you'd usually expect. And we can identify that and, and bring that to attention uh, and say, hey, here's something you should look at. What's going on with your artist? What's driving this in the world? Um, so as time has gone by, we've also added data science and we've added deeper analytics into our stack. Uh, and so that's more of what we're moving into now, which is having sources still pulling data into storage, still doing cleaning. Uh, but now we've got this analytics and data science layer that's cleaning our data and it's building interesting sets on top of it. And I'll show you a little bit more of that later. Um, that gets pushed into data marts and those are basically ways to store data so that you could look at it geographically, you could look at a chart for an artist, you could look at uh, the time series, you could look at all kinds of different projections of this data. And finally it goes into the product. Uh, I won't go into too much on this, but this is our latest architecture. Um, so we're using a lot of the uh, sort of cutting edge open source big data tools. Um, and what we're really trying to do is make this as scalable as possible so that for the hundreds of thousands of artists that we track, we can collect all of their daily metrics from you know, up to 50 or even 100 different sources and put all of those metrics into our database very quickly at the same time every day and ensure that that data is being stored with high fidelity. Um, and more importantly, we have these services at the bottom here, as I was mentioning, that can serve up the geo data, the metadata about an artist, event data, so things like if you have a blog post that happened or you had a concert, um, we can store those things and, and pull those in with the data and then the time series and also the chart. So those are ranking things like a billboard chart. Um, and I'll go into a little bit about the way that we analyze this data as well. So from our data science perspective, uh, we're really working with a lot of data, but we try to make it so that we can explore things quickly. Um, and this is something that uh, people who are trying to work with data, uh, it's a great skill to be able to uh, slice out pieces that you think are relevant and then try to work with those in very limited environments. And once you've validated that that works on a single artist or a handful of artists, you can expand that out to a broader audience. Um, so we prototype in R, which is a statistical program. And then we deploy that in either R or Java code. Uh, and we have a big analytics cluster where once we have these uh, algorithms we want to run, we can push them across our entire data set. Uh, so that's enough tech and let's get back into sort of interesting information. Um, so a few of the things we've been working on in terms of data science, uh, we've been working on periodicity. So this is looking at sources and trying to understand, like we were looking at with iTunes and with Spotify, what's the typical pattern of this source? Um, so this is a study that I did looking at uh, across all of our data for top artists, so for about the top um, two or 3,000 artists um, in terms of popularity what's the periodicity of their data sources? So we looked at from four to 50 weeks of history for those artists, and then for each artist for each week, we wanna find the percentage of the weekly activity that's happening each day. So for example, you'd say maybe 17% of my weekly activity happens on Friday. And then we can produce this average artist week. So for this given artist, what's the week look like? Monday's 12%, Tuesday's 15%, et cetera. Uh, once we have that, we want to look at that across all of these artists, these thousands of artists. Um, so we want to split by the day, so we'll look at all the Mondays and examine the distribution of that. And so that's what this looks like. Um, this picture on the left here is a distribution, 
And it's the height of the line here is in terms of how common that percentage is of the weekly activity for this day. So for example, on Sunday here, we would say that the most typical value is about 15, uh, or sorry, 14.5% of the weekly activity. And we can do that for each day, and we can find out that for Facebook page likes, there's very strong activity on Sunday and Monday, but as you go further out into the week, you're slowly declining all the way through Friday, and then eventually bumping back up on Saturday. So again, this is something that you could use to target your marketing activities. You could know that if you're trying to push a post on Facebook, you're trying to engage with your fans, you should probably be doing that early in the week uh, when they're still paying attention, when there's still a lot of people coming to that page and becoming new fans. Uh, and as the week goes on, you should maybe move to some other source that has more activity at that time of the week. Um, a couple other interesting things about these. Uh, if you look at the breakdown of RDO and radio, they turn out to be basically the opposite. And this is similar to Spotify and iTunes. So with RDO, uh, streaming service, you can see very high utilization during the week. So Monday through Friday, people are using it a lot and even ramping up during the week as I guess they stop doing as much work. Uh, and then Saturday and Sunday, they're not uh, quite as, uh, as strong in terms of usage. And radio shows the exact opposite of that, right? So spins for a major artist will see mostly on Saturday and Sunday. So again, if you're trying to optimize your marketing activities, you can do that knowing the weekly pattern of activity here. Uh, and what we want to do with this type of data science research is really to push it out. At conferences like this, uh, we want to get it released. So this is that information uh, being shown as a, a physical print and billboard. And we want to get this information out there so that we can make it useful to people. That's the whole sort of point of our company is to make data useful. Um, so I'll go into one more instance of interesting data science. And that is uh, using our find product, which is a product that's meant to discover new artists, um, or at least discover artists that have certain characteristics. Uh, so we've done an interesting project, which is trying to find virality of an artist, trying to find artists that are growing at a fast rate uh, and that are growing with a curvature, right? Um, so I have a simple example here looking at a curve uh, just with five points and trying to fit a polynomial regression to that. Um, and so the idea is we want to find out how curvy is this regression and how much is it pointing up. Uh, so we want to look at this circle term up here next to the x squared. So that tells us basically how curvy is it we also want to find out how well it fits to that curve. So is this just sort of a, uh, a curve that happened to fit that, or is it actually a nice uh, quadratic curve that's sloping up? Um, so we can combine these two things to produce a measure of virality. And with this measure of virality, we can discover artists that are trending up. So with our find product, you can define a number of different filters. And with those filters, you can filter down all of our hundreds of thousands of artists into a very small subset that matches what you want. Um, so here I'm looking for musicians on YouTube uh, that have high virality and that are not very well known. So these musicians are only getting between 300 and 10,000 YouTube views uh, in the past 30 days. They're musicians and they have between 25 and the maximum virality, which is 100. Uh, and you can see here that we're also generating distributions for each of these metrics. So for the video views, you can see there's a nice sort of normal bell curve here. And you can use that to sort of understand what's going on. Understand what, uh, when you're selecting a certain uh, number for a metric, you know, what does 20,000 Facebook fans mean? What does 300 YouTube views mean? Uh, you can understand that by looking at this distribution and knowing that here we're going to select <clears throat> maybe about the 40th percentile to the 60th percentile of this distribution. So not huge artists, not tiny artists, you know, probably like my YouTube channel or my grandma or somebody, but uh, within a certain range and understanding the context from that. Uh, and likewise, with the virality, we're really only selecting highly viral artists because the vast majority of them fall way below that. Uh, and so doing that, you can find new artists. You can see their time series. You can see that they are getting sort of recent play. They're, they're getting uh, new attention. And potentially, this is something that you could use to reach out to artists. So if you're a South by Southwest, if you're any conference, if you're a venue that's looking for artists in your area, you could use this to sort of slice and dice and find artists that potentially uh, you could get on in terms of um, right when they're young, right when they're just starting to become very popular. Uh, we've also done some other interesting research with this fine product. 
and that is the likelihood that an artist will appear on the Billboard Top 200 chart in the next year. So we take a look at all of the metrics for an artist and we try to understand, looking at that historically, what types of metric patterns would indicate that an artist is going to become very popular, that they're going to sell very well, that their singles are going to get on the Billboard Top 200 chart. So we train this model on historical data, we validate against that, we prototype it, as I mentioned before, and then we move that into production. Um, and what that shows up as is a prediction within our find system. So here you can see I'm looking for artists who have less than 20,000 Facebook fans, uh, which is still uh, the vast majority of artists that are in our database. But I want to find the ones that have the highest likelihood of showing up on the Billboard 200, uh, according to our algorithm. Again, this isn't perfect, but it's supposed to give a good identifier to be uh, really an efficient tool to cut down the number of artists that you have to look at and to bring, that, bring those artists that are important to the forefront so that you can use your own knowledge of the music industry to uh, evaluate them. And so here we're looking at a set of artists that are sorted by their likelihood of appearing on the Billboard 200. These are probably artists that have major singles out but still haven't made it to the chart yet uh, and have low Facebook fans. Uh, so this would be a great way, this type of tool, this type of analysis is a great way for people who are looking for artists to be at their festivals again or uh, join up with brands or really any uh, prototype where you know what kind of artist you want and you're just trying to filter through all the hundreds of thousands of them out there to find the ones that are relevant to you. Uh, and so the future things that we want to do with our data science are things like time series prediction. So if we could know 30 days in advance, let's say, how good your iTunes sales are going to be, or how many Facebook fans you're, have, you're going to have, or potentially how many people are going to be at a concert uh, according to an event. We want to know those things. We want to be able to make that available to people. Um, we also want to do geographic benchmarks and alerts. And so this is really helpful in the case of trying to plan a tour. So if you're going to look for uh, what's a region in this country where I'm doing much better than most artists are doing, uh, or what country in the world am I doing in uh, doing better in than most artists in terms of Twitter mentions or in terms of Facebook fans. Uh, we want to do research around that. And we want to know the reaction to events. So we saw that a little bit with the concert and the track sales for Super Lydia, or the, the YouTube plays for Super Lydio. Um, but we'd really like to be able to do that for any event. So for a blog post, uh, for concerts, um, really for anything that can happen with an artist, we want to understand what's the typical pattern of metrics around that event. And then how do you compare? Did you do really well? Did you do poorly? What could you have done better uh, to optimize your reach? Um, so the takeaways from all this, uh, there's huge social data volumes today. And the best way to take those and to make them useful is through visualization and data storytelling. Uh, we'd like to help out and we'd like to see other people in the industry help out as well with advanced analytics and data science. And these are ways to really get at some of the underlying patterns, things that are non-obvious, industry trends or uh, patterns in the data that you wouldn't see just with your naked eye. Um, and behind all that is obviously some technological processing capacity. It's sort of a necessary component to work with big data. But really the core point that I want to leave you with is that data analytics as a whole are tools to make you more effective. These aren't silver bullets. These aren't... Uh, really trying to um, meddle in a way. They're really trying to help people work. Uh, we're trying to make you more effective as a brand promoter, as a band promoter, um, as a tour planner, as an artist in terms of discovering what your fans are like and uh, where they are and you know, what kinds of things they're interested in. Um, data is really a great tool to make you more effective. And that's really our whole mission at Next Big Sound. And uh, so thanks very much for your attention. And I'd love to take any questions. Bueno, mi pregunta es, eh, vimos como todas las fuentes de información de las cuales ustedes recogen los datos, ¿existen fuentes alternativas eh, de lo que está pasando con la música de pronto no legal? 
como en el caso de The Pirate Bay, por, un, por decir algún tipo de ejemplo, de qué sucede en esos sitios? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of things that are going on with BitTorrent, of course. Um, there's still some holdover from other networks. Um, we don't track those metrics. Uh, we're focused more on the social media side, but those are definitely important in terms of understanding the demand for your band. Um, the question is, you know, how much does that affect sales? That's what people are always concerned about. Um, but we're really more interested in sort of looking forward. How can you predict what sales are going to happen? How can you better market your band? Um, so in the sense that that would give you better access to information about your fans, to know maybe where they are or what types of uh, songs or other music they're interested in, I think that's useful. Um, but otherwise, we don't focus on it very much. Alguien más? Yeah, so uh, Next Big Sound is, uh, you can go to nextbigsound.com. We have a free version where you can sort of get some information. And then as you want to get into more detail to do different types of analyses or to pull out uh, richer data sources, uh, you can sign up for an account and we have plans for that. So. Can you do that like with a bunch of bands? Like I have, uh, I don't know, five or six blues bands. Can I take all that and see it as a whole? Yeah, absolutely. You want to roll them up into sort of one aggregate artist or you want to look at all of them at once? Uh, no, I, I would like to have like six bands and yep. see like oh, the trends. Definitely. So uh, I'll go back through some of my slides and uh, see if I can give you an example. Um, if we look at the slide that was showing the different tracks here, you can do the same thing with different artists. Um, so you can bring in a bunch of different artists and you could have, let's say, all of their Facebook fans or all of their YouTube video views over time. And you could sort of plot them all at once there. Um, you'll also be able to see along with that all the events that happen for those artists. So you can see if there's a big spike, you can click on that day and find out what's going on. Um, and before that, we were looking a little bit at, the, at this overview here. This is the best way to look at a lot of artists at once and a lot of metrics. So let's say that all these artists were in your portfolio. Uh, you could look at, oh, sorry, you could look at whatever key metric is there. Um, so for example, maybe you care about Twitter mentions and YouTube video views. You can put those up there see what the trends are like for all your artists. You can see the little spark lines underneath uh, and really understand what's going on there. Thanks. Sure. You can predict uh, what video is going gonna, is gonna to be viral. I'm sorry, say it one more time. Uh, you can predict um, what video is going gonna, is gonna to be like viral or very, very, with a high number of visits. Yeah, you so have like a standard like this video have, have this and this and this. So we can try. Um, so with that virality uh, exploration in Find that we did, um, really what we're trying to do is identify things that are already viral, that are starting to be viral. So um, let's say you have a video that starts out, you know, it's got 100 views, it's just starting to creep up a little bit, but then people start to find it. And its curvature in terms of its metric starts to go up like this. Um, so we can identify that and say that right now it's behaving as though it's viral, right? Because the, the rate of play is accelerating. Um, so we can say that, yeah, we think that that's a viral thing and we can rate these songs based upon how viral they are. Um, and so our hope is that being able to use that in conjunction with the artist filters to be able to say, I only want, you know, artists that are in the rap genre that have between 20,000 and 30,000 fans and what's the most viral track within that. That will really help people narrow it down and understand uh, what they should be paying attention to. Bueno, eh, antes de que se paren, agradecerles por estar esta mañana con nosotros. Eh, tenemos un break de almuerzo. Por el retraso será solo media hora. Si gustan aquí venden pizzas. Eh, okay. Después de esa media hora seguimos con un taller de startups de música que va a ser liderado por eh, Santiago Restrepo de Musical y por Bernardo Franco de Gmop. Eh, a continuación de eso tendremos una ponencia de, del Ministerio de Cultura sobre el proyecto Lazo y al finalizar eh, arranca el conversatorio en la carpa principal del Colegio Nuevo Gimnasio con Richard Gutter de The Orchard, a quien vieron en el primer panel esta mañana. 
se, es muy recomendado que vayan, es, va a ser súper interesante. Y luego de eso tendremos showcase en la, al frente de la tienda Toto de la calle T con los Petit Felas y con los de la van. Eh, y así acabamos el día de hoy. Sus comentarios, eh, sugerencias, lo que quieran a nuestras redes sociales en arroba resonancia col eh, o con el hashtag resonancia 13. Muchas gracias, nos vemos en media hora. Okay.